All right, good evening, everybody. I would like to welcome you to tonight's GI Jobs Franchise Conference. My name is Chris Hale, and uh, you all have made a very wise decision uh, to be here this evening. Uh, I would like to say that franchising is just an unbelievable opportunity for veterans, and it's an opportunity that frankly is not very well understood, and we're going to change that tonight. During tonight's webinar, you're going to be given all the scoop, the good and the bad, on what franchising is all about. You're going to be given an inside look as well into one of the nation's only franchise opportunities designed exclusively for veterans. Tonight's presentation is going to last about 25 minutes, and then we're going to have some time for some Q&A afterwards. We're going to be broadcasting live on Zoom tonight and simulcasting uh, on LinkedIn and on Facebook Live. Feel free, please, to use the chat. Uh, if you've got any questions, go ahead and throw them into the chat, whether you're on Zoom, LinkedIn, or Facebook, and we will have an opportunity to address those after the webinar. At the conclusion of the webinar as well, you're going to have an opportunity to take the next step in franchise ownership and to have a one-to-one -one, uh, initial interview with a member of the Veteran Service Brands team. You can do that tonight after the webinar. We're going to be on for as long as uh, anybody wants to, uh, to be around uh, till I think 10 o'clock at the latest. And then um, we will, you'll have an opportunity to actually schedule uh, time slots for tomorrow between 3 and 9 p.m. Those slots are limited. And uh, if you are interested in moving forward with veteran service brands, um, it is a uh, critical step to becoming a franchise owner uh, with them. Uh, okay, on to our host tonight. If you decide to open a Veteran Service Brands franchise, you are not going to be working only for yourselves. You're going to be having a team of people behind you, pulling for you, supporting you, and this is all led by someone from your tribe, a fellow veteran. I'm proud to announce and introduce you to the captain of that ship, the founder and CEO of Veteran Service Brands. Mr. Jack Child will serve as the host and the presenter of tonight's Franchising 101 webinar. Brief background about Jack. Uh, he enlisted in the Army, uh, got out, used his GI Bill, enrolled at Embry-Riddle University, uh, was commissioned in the Air Force as a C-141 pilot upon graduation, uh, and joined the Air Force. Left active duty, uh, joined Delta Airlines, where he spent 32 years as an airline pilot and as an instructor pilot. And in 2005, Jack founded Black Dog Seal Coat and later Yellow Dog Parking Lot Striping. So he's been in this franchising business uh, as a founder, as a franchisor, as a, as the whole nine yards. He knows it. Uh, he knows it forwards and backwards. This eventually led to G Force, which which uh, many of you have probably heard of, and then most recently Veteran Service Brands, which he launched uh, more recently. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to give you a great American, a savvy businessman, and a man who wants to share all of that success and give fellow veterans a chance to have that same opportunity, my friend, Mr. Jack Child. Hey, Chris. Uh, thanks very much. Uh, it's very painful to look at those pictures there. <laughs> the, young, uh, the young Army uh, private, uh, just for the record, I only had my jacket and shirt and tie on and not much else below that, but uh, <laughs> too much information. But anyway, thanks very much. I'm here to share with you uh, some of what I know about franchising. Uh, franchising can seem a little intimidating when you're looking at opening a business. And I thought I'd share with a little bit of what I've learned over the last, uh, I guess, 17 years or so of being exposed to the business. I've got a little slide presentation. I promise it won't be death by PowerPoint, but we'll, it, it is something to for you to reference, uh, you know, franchising is really big business in the United States. Uh, there's about $670 billion in sales. It employs 8 million people. There are over 3,500 franchise brands, uh, 753,000 franchise locations. And it is, uh, is typically described as the most successful business model ever created. And the reason for that is you can take uh, one success story and then multiply that across multiple locations. So it's most folks think of franchising as fast foods. You know, first thing that comes to mind is McDonald's. McDonald's really kind of perfected the model 
uh, Ray, Ray Kroc, uh, just a Ray Kroc, uh, brilliant man. And uh, when you walk into a McDonald's in Washington state, you get the same experience as you do in Washington, DC. And that's really what franchising is all about is giving that, that branded standardized service or product across a long, across a, a large marketplace. You, you know, there's uh, franchises, uh, fitness is big in the franchising world. Uh, there are consulting franchises, home services franchises, brick and mortar restaurants, uh, commercial services, which is our, our bread and butter, countless opportunities, you know, pet franchising, you name it, there's, there's a franchise for it out there. So there's a, a lot to choose from. And it, how and why does a franchise work? Well, it works because it's duplicating a success. Someone comes up with a great idea, a business model, and they want to expand. Uh, the franchise model is the most efficient way to do that. When you join a franchise system, they're sharing your trade secrets. Uh, the franchisor does exert some control over the system because it is their brand. And it's important for all those who have bought into the brand that there are some brand standards. And uh, so there is some control exerted by the franchisor. You're going to have access to their trademarks, their trade secrets, and in exchange for all that and so much more, uh, there's, there's money uh, exchange from the franchisees. So what do, what do the franchisors charge? There's almost always, frankly, a, a franchise fee of some sort. Franchise fees are on the rise right now. They're typically in the $35,000 to $50,000 range. And uh, there's several reasons for that. Uh, one is it's very expensive to recruit franchisees, uh, frankly, as you, with 3,500 other brands competing, it gets very expensive to try and recruit and get your attention. Um, adult franchisors will also charge you a royalty typically, and that royalty can be in the form of a fixed amount per month or a percentage of sales. And there are also some miscellaneous fees. Um, with our brands, we charge uh, a, a small telephone fee of $20. And then we have a technology fee and that covers things like website support, uh, Google pay-per-click management, uh, Facebook ad management, um, company, uh, company software, estimating software. So there are some other fees and those are typically just to cover costs that are direct costs for the franchise or the franchise fee uh, will cover, basically it gets your foot in the door. It, you're gonna get uh, training. You should get an, a territory with, for that franchise fee that's defined access and legal use of the trademarks and trade secrets. And then for the royalties, that covers the ongoing support, uh, branding, marketing, and a lot of business development goes in uh, to a, a good franchise brand where they're they're basically acting as your mentor, your partner in making sure your local uh, business succeeds. So if you do get in looking into a franchise, you'll be offered what's called the franchise disclosure document or we call it the FDD. And it's a really long document. And it's, the reason it's long is because the Federal Trade Commission has regulated franchise sales. And they what they've decided is they want the franchise prospect to have the, the most current and relevant information to help you make a decision uh, about investing your hard-earned money in that particular brand. There are 23 different items that are, uh, each franchise disclosure document will essentially look the same. Uh, the words and the, and the content is different, but the layout is, is exactly the same from one brand to the next, whether it's a McDonald's or a Slurpee franchise or a one of our brands, you're gonna see uh, one through 23, very um, very specifically laid out in a certain order. And that's to, that's to your advantage. The key word there being disclosure. There's a lot of things that are shared with you that you need to know how much, what's the franchise fee? How is your uh, territory defined? What kind of support can you expect? What trademarks are involved? Uh, any litigation history, uh, the list of current and former franchisees, it's, it's a really lengthy document, but it's really there to protect you. And it's also there to protect the franchisor's brand. It, it's, a, it's a very important document. If you do sign on with a franchise, it typically uh, contracts run five to 10 years and they're, they're almost always renewable. Um, and it, 
the contract really is just codifying what that disclosure document told you that, that the franchisor is going to do for you. It kind of puts it in, in contract form saying this franchisor awards to you this certain territory for this fee and you get uh, these items in exchange for, for joining that franchise. So if you're looking into a franchise, due diligence is important. There are three areas that I think are the most important for you to, to look at. One is um, if you get serious, hire a franchise attorney. And I will say not just any attorney. And if you have a, a buddy, family member who's an attorney, by all means, uh, consult with them. But uh, without stepping on their toes, if they're not a dedicated franchise attorney, spend a little extra money with a franchise attorney because that franchise disclosure document has a lot of nuance that a contract attorney might not pick up on. And so your franchise attorney is a very important step there. We encourage all of our franchise prospects to, to hire a franchise attorney. Uh, take a look at litigation and bankruptcy. Are the franchisees selling the, the uh, suing the franchisors? Uh, you know, there's always some conflict uh, that's, that, that can ar arise once in a while. Uh, if you've got a franchise with a couple of uh, hundred locations and there's one lawsuit from a franchisee, well, anybody can sue anybody for anything. Um, you might have to dig a little deeper. I wouldn't be too alarmed by some litigation, but I would ask some tough questions if you see that. And of course, if there's been something that's triggered a bankruptcy with the franchise or you need to dig into that as well. But the very most important step that you can do is to reach out to the existing and if there are former franchisees pick up the phone and call them introduce yourself tell them you're thinking of joining their brand and you'd like to hear their story that disclosure document is great it's awesome but the true story will come from the the real life experiences with those uh, existing and former franchisees and they'll tell you what you know they'll give you the inside scoop on what it's like to, to, you know, to live and be in that, in that brand. That's a really important step. And when you're looking at a franchise, you often faced with, well, if I can do this uh, on my own. Our, all four of our brands, we have four brands, uh, G-Force, Parking Lot Striping, uh, Field Ops, Athletic Field Markings, uh, Mach 1, Epoxy Floors, and Paint Core Painting Franchise. I assure you, everyone in this in this call could figure out a way to do all four of those brands. But you also have to ask yourself the question, why? Do you, do you really want to go through all that effort to figure out, you know, to figure this all out? Sure, you can go to YouTube and most folks think that, you know, yeah, I could paint a house, I've painted my own house. But do you know how to scale that? Do you know how to run crews? Do you know how to advertise market? Is the brand that you think really clever, does that work with the customer? You might, spend a lot of time and effort building a certain brand and it just never connects with the customer base. And ultimately they decide who, who the winners and losers are. So the, some of the pros with going to franchise, you're gonna have that training, that support, the branding, marketing, uh, group discounts. Uh, that's a big thing in our, in our group and national accounts. We have a lot of national accounts that uh, standalone operators just don't have access to. The cons are you're gonna have to pay some fees. You, you're gonna have some limits on your, on your territory and you lose some of that independence. You, you can't buy one of our franchises and decide you're also gonna sell tacos out of our truck. That's, that's just not allowed, that sort of thing. And that's kind of an extreme point. Uh, going in alone, there's some pros there. If you are truly 100% uh, type A and just can't take any direction, a uh, franchise is not for you. We need, we're looking for good leaders and, we're, and, and good, good leadership, good followership with the brand, uh, franchise. If you can't, if you don't like taking any sort of direction, franchise is probably not for you. Um, you do get to be independent, but you are independent. You are truly on your own. You're gonna to have to develop your own systems. You're gonna to have to uh, create uh, marketing, branding. You're gonna to have to figure out how to get leads off the internet. And, and certainly you could start, you could build your own website tonight and have that live tomorrow. That doesn't mean Google is going to reward you and put you on, on the top of page one. That's what the franchise or brands should be doing for you, those sorts of things. Um, we also think you're going to do, you won't do as much in sales. I'm, I think if you reached out to any of our uh, franchise owners, they would absolutely tell you that they would never have as near the sales that they do now if they were trying to do this on their own. 
but it can be done. And uh, that's uh, something I think you, you should take a look at and, and weigh the pros and cons as you, you know, look into starting your own business. One thing about franchising, they say, you know, you're, you're in, in business, uh, you're, not, you're never by yourself. You're working for yourself, but you're not, not alone in business. You've always have a partner with us. Next slide, please. So uh, right now, the franchise world about 10, 15 years ago figured out that veterans make great franchisees. They, they show, they, they've got some great world experiences. They know how to show up, you know, kind of, you know, follow a system. And all of a sudden the franchise world has really embraced veterans, which is awesome for the veteran community. There's uh, typically uh, discounts for, for veterans and uh, franchise fees. Um, and some brands have gone so far that they've built the brand around veterans, which is what we did. Uh, we were the first to dedicate our brands 100% to veterans. You, you have to be a veteran to own a, uh, one of our four brands. And so uh, I, if I could, I'll do a little more shameless plugging here about a couple of our brands, or all four of our brands, if you will. We've got GeForce parking lot striping. I, we just signed our 32nd location. Uh, we are now the largest brand in that space, and we did that in three short years. Uh, field Ops is a direct descendant of GeForce. We've been doing some athletic field marking with the GeForce teams, but our equipment's a little, it, it can do it, but it's a little heavy. And most of our GeForce guys are frankly just too busy to deal with athletic fields. And we're turning down a lot of work right now for athletic fields. And we also saw uh, a place for a low cost franchise for, with Field Ops. If you have a suitable pickup truck, I can get you into, uh, into business with a wrap like that, uh, the basic equipment to get started, franchise fee all in for under $20,000. We, we turned a lot away, uh, excuse me, a lot of folks couldn't join GeForce just because as low cost as we were, it was still just a, a bridge a little too far money-wise to get them across the finish line. So Field Ops was born. Uh, and if I could, anybody in Atlanta or know someone in Atlanta, we have enormous amount of work we're turning away right now. Our, our GeForce in Atlanta had been doing some work. He built up a pretty good customer base. He just can't keep up with that. I really need somebody in Atlanta like yesterday. So anyone that has a contact in Atlanta, please reach out to us. Next brand up is Mach 1 Epoxy Floors. Oh, I'm sorry, there's a slide about GeForce there. Um, and there's Field Ops, thanks. Next up would be uh, Mach 1 Epoxy Floors. Epoxy Floors are hot right now, both residentially and commercially. Huge market in the, in the commercial space, and the residential market has, has blown up um, because people are taking care of their homes. It's, it's, if there's a concrete surface out there, it needs some sort of coating on it. There's a lot of concrete out there and, and Mach 1 is, is a, great, uh, a great brand for an owner operator that can transition to an owner manager um, operation. And then finally, Paint Core. Uh, this is a really neat story. So the gentleman on the right is Burgess Perry. He's the brother-in-law of my very first GeForce franchisee, Vishal Munasami. Uh, Burgess's wife, uh, pictured next to him, is married to Vishal's, excuse me, is, is Vishal's sister. So they live near each other. So they, as it turns out, uh, Burgess started his painting company about the same time I started GeForce. And, and they, they're close-knit family and they're always talking business uh, often when they see each other. He watched GeForce grow and we were able to watch his painting business grow. He now has 12 uh, service vehicles, about 24 technicians, uh, estimating staff. He's, he's blown up his market. Uh, he started as American Veteran Painting. And then he approached me about, you know, taking his, uh, all that he's learned and all his systems in the painting business and doing the same thing that we did with GeForce only on the paint, home painting uh, uh, space and so uh, because of some trademark uh, challenges we had to rebrand so he's he ripped all the the uh, the old markings off all of his trucks and rebranded as paint core just uh, just to uh, open up the door to franchising 
Uh, we've already got a couple of GeForce folks who are taking on the Paint Core uh, uh, franchise here shortly, which is, I think, uh, an acknowledgement to how well we did with GeForce that they want more of the same with uh, another brand to grow their portfolio. Uh, Burgess will be available in our uh, after the session and in the future uh, uh, conferences. If anyone wants to talk about Paint Course specifically, make sure to, you reach out to Burgess. He's got some incredible systems and you would, you would go down to uh, Tampa to train with your crew. And one thing I need to make sure is clear is we're not looking for someone to be there with a paintbrush painting homes. We're looking for folks for Paint Corps to be the owner manager hiring crew to go do that work. And we were expecting those to look into Paint Corps to really want to scale very aggressively and very quickly following Burgess's system. So that's kind of the, the rundown on all our brands, but I, I would encourage you to take a look out there, uh, look for veteran discounts uh, with franchises. It's really an incredible um, uh, industry. There are some terribly uh, successful folks who are franchisees for a lot of different brands out there. And uh, I, I think it's a great spot for veterans to, to take a look. So that's, that's what I've got, Chris, on my little dog and pony show. Thanks for, thanks for giving me that time. Yeah, you got it, Jack. Listen, uh, it's uh, really, really great words of wisdom and um, a, a nice quick overview, right? In, in uh, 17 or 18 minutes, I think you've captured, you've captured franchising at a very base level and debunked a lot of myths, I think, that probably a lot of people that don't know much about it have. Um, Edgar, if you could move on to the next, the next uh, slide here. Uh, so guys, I'm just gonna give you a quick, this is just a quick two minute video. And um, I wanted to give you a sense and we're gonna get into uh, some other stuff here shortly, but I wanted to give you a sense of the kind of culture that exists at Veteran Service Brands. Um, this is Eric Ryan. He is a uh, he's an Air Force uh, service member currently uh, uh, in the Air Force Reserves, and um, he's been one of the G Force franchisees for about a year. And uh, anyway, in, in Eric's own words, if we could show this, Edgar, I'd appreciate it. G Force has changed my life. Yeah. I've always <laughs> you know my hometown's 150 people you know most of them really uh hard-working blue-collar folks the whole county was missing a lot of opportunities in the in the 70s and 80s and and the the common thinking was if you were going to make something of yourself you had to leave and uh, and I did I turned 18 and a week later I was in basic training. So um, I did not have an easy path and I would not give that up for anything. I've clawed and scratched my way to anything that I've got. But thanks to G-Force, I will at some point, I think, uh, feel as successful as I possibly could. You know. And it's not about money and awards and all of that necessarily. It's, it's, it's all part of it. It's all linked. But it's about the relationships, the bonds, the support, knowing that other people genuinely care about what you do when you get out of bed, you know, how, how your day goes. And, uh, and knowing that if you're struggling, there's somebody there for it. Part of this whole emotion here is is knowing what G-Force has done for my brothers and sisters out there too, you know. Man, it's, uh, I mean, don't get me wrong, it, it, it's, it's hard work out there, you know. But G-Force is an opportunity. And if you just work and make the most of that opportunity, they won't let you fail. So yeah, really good stuff. I think you can see the kind of support and the kind of emotional uh, impact. You know, and this is one of the things I just want, this is one of the things that when many of us leave the military, 
Um, you know, us here at GI Jobs are ever familiar with the fact that veterans more than anything miss the esprit de corps, the camaraderie, the sense of family, the sense of belonging that you have in the military. You know, you move from base to base or post to post and you've got an instant family wherever you go. I think that's one of the really, you know, listen, there's lots of franchise opportunities. The one of the really unique ones are about veteran service brands is just a real family feel. It's just for veterans and just a whole lot of support there. Um, also want to just mention that with uh, GI Jobs bringing you these types of opportunities, uh, you're also working with an organization in GI Jobs that has the deepest roots in veteran entrepreneurship. We founded and continue to operate Vetrepreneur Magazine, uh, which serves the nation's 2.5 million veteran-owned businesses. Those are not all franchise businesses. Many of them are, but not all. Um, and I also want to say a pretty interesting fact that one in seven franchises is owned by a military veteran. So Jack mentioned earlier, a lot of those attributes, it's, uh, it's true. An awful lot of veterans do own franchises. Um, GI Jobs also founded the National Veteran Owned Business Association, which is a nonprofit that serves to certify veterans in their pursuit of getting corporate contracts. Uh, we started the Veteranpreneur of the Year program. And last, uh, we, we uh, started and continue to operate the Buy Veteran program, which encourages uh, Americans to purchase goods and services from veteran-owned businesses. So you're dealing with an organization that knows this space and um, we're happy to continue to serve. Uh, I, at this time, I want to, we're gonna take a few questions here, but I wanna turn the program over briefly to Rachel Pitts. She is going to cover the process for talking live uh, with a member of the Veteran Service Brands team if you would like to do that this evening or tomorrow. And by the way, Rachel is the spouse of an active duty Marine, Staff Sergeant John Pitts. Rachel. Hey, Chris, thank you. Um, all right, well, I'm gonna share my screen and show everybody exactly where they need to be um, to register for the chat sessions tonight. So here we have um, the landing page and I believe Edgar will throw this in the chat for everyone. Um, so you're just gonna click enter to chat. Uh, it's going on from tonight or tonight from eight to 10 and then tomorrow. Um, you can also log in from um, 3 p.m. to 9 p.m. Eastern time. So once you click enter to chat, you'll be um, taken here. And if you've ever attended uh, a franchise conference or a um, virtual career expo, you'll, um, instead of signing up, you'll just log in. If you have not, then you will um, fill out this information and sign up. Once you've signed in, um, it will bring you to your registration page. So here's where you're gonna fill out, let me make this a little bit bigger. You're gonna fill out all this information um, and this is gonna let Jack and his team um, review where you are in your journey um, as in becoming a franchisee. So um, obviously they need your contact information. It's important to put a, a valid phone number, um, where you're currently located. Um, as Chris mentioned, my husband's an active duty Marine. So we're here in Fort Lost in the Woods, Missouri. Um, oh, there we go. And that's in the United States. So you're gonna enter in your um, highest education level, branch of service, I'm obviously a spouse, but I'm gonna steal my husband's identity here. Um, he's been in for 12 years, so years of service. Um, and this is important because I believe Jack mentioned the discounts, you get 1% um, for every year of service um, for the G-Force brand as a discount. Um, current military st uh, status, so I am a military spouse. And then here you're gonna put in um, which franchise opportunities you're interested in. You can pick from one to all four, so if you're interested in Mach 1 and Paint Core, select those or whichever ones you want. Um, and that'll um, allow the representatives to know exactly which ones you're interested in and that can lead the conversation once you're in the chat. Um, your desired franchise location. This can be anywhere um, at, as long as the territory is not taken. Um, but so you can put in uh, multiple options here. This is a text field. So you can add, um, you know, I would say three to five locations that you're interested in. Um, and as we all know, a franchise is a, um, a, a business. And so we're gonna need to know where you stand financially. Um, so if you know where your credit score is, you can input that here. Um, if you're not sure, you can just say, I'm not sure, or you choose not to disclose at this time. And then the same for net worth. So you can put um, any one of these or um, just leave it on select or yeah. Oh. 
I should update this. I'll update this before it goes live. Um, there should be a, an option that says you, you prefer not to disclose. Um, and then lastly is your um, purchase time frame and any concerns you have about opening a franchise. So uh, again, you can select multiples of here uh, of the time frames. So if you're not sure exactly how long you have before you're ready, uh, you think it's sometime in between the three to 12 month range, you can select multiple. And then lastly, you can put any concerns you have about franchising. So it might be running the equipment, financing, anything that's on your mind um, that you want to guide the conversation that you have with the, the representative. And if this is your first time, then you'll click save or submit. It would say submit, mine says save. And then I would strongly encourage you to go to the lobby. And the lobby is actually where you can see the booths of the different brands. So this one has um, three of the brands, GeForce, Mach 1, and Field Ops. And then Paint Core is over here um, as Burgess is the main point of contact for that. So that's who will be manning that booth. And then tonight, I believe Jack and Craig will be in the GeForce Mach 1 Field Ops booth. So if you go ahead and enter the booth, you'll see um, more information on those brands. And there's also links to the websites. And back in the lobby, we also have um, a couple more videos that you can um, view, uh, testimonials, as well as, those are over here, as well as a um, funding PDF that has just some more information on um, financing. So that is how you register for the event. Um, and for tonight, it's open chat. And for Thursday, you'll receive an invitation in your email. Um, from one of the veteran service brands representatives inviting you to chat in their booth. So definitely be on the lookout. Um, those will be going out throughout the morning. Um, I believe the cutoff time to register is noon tomorrow. So make sure you get your registration in prior to that. So that's what I've got. Back to you, Chris. Excellent. Thank you so much. Um, hey, can we, Edgar, can you put the uh, slides back up with the URL? So if anybody is watching on Facebook or LinkedIn Live, um, we're going to flash this URL up that you can go to, to, uh, to get into the event. There we go. And um, for anybody who is watching on uh, Zoom, same thing, go to that link and you'll be able to, uh, to register. Okay, we have lots of questions. I'm going to get to those. Um, again, great presentation, Jack. I love the part about franchising or go it alone. So in business, you know, the rule of thumb is outsource everything that is not your core competency. And um, I think there's a, you know, a lot of truisms in that um, franchises have really gotten that down pat. So you mentioned, you know, you mentioned this a lot, but somebody had a question about, listen, um, I know how to paint. I've been doing that since I was a kid. Uh, I can go out and I can do this. Tell us again, maybe some of the, you know, primary reasons or some of the stronger reasons why there are advantages to kind of going, uh, the advantages of going through a franchise uh, painting business as opposed to doing it on your own. Great question. So, you know, the, uh, oh. all right, I guess the recording stopped. Um, anyway, the, uh, the marketplace is very sophisticated. The customers have become, uh, you know, their own detectives. They can go online. They're going to research online. They're going to, uh, they're going to Google your business. They're looking for, you know, where do you show up on search results? Uh, they're very demanding. And uh, yes, you could, you could go start your own painting business and, and be very busy in, in a hurry right now, just word of mouth. But you would probably be the one doing the, doing the work and, and there's nothing wrong with that at all, but we're looking for entrepreneurs who, who want to scale that. And, and it's the scaling part that franchises know how to do. And, and we have all those systems in place. You really just need to plug in and play. You don't have to wonder, well, will this ad work or not? We've already made a million mistakes that you don't have to. So all of our systems are proven. We know they work. Uh, I'll give you an example. I, uh, for some reason, uh, folks were selling radio, this trying to sell radio ads to our franchisees. And it's very attractive. Some will even create like a sample ad for you and they'll play that for them. And it's really cool hearing about your business on the radio. But radio is not the place to be for 
uh, I don't think for any of our brands. And so I saved my folks thousands of dollars this week by telling them, I don't recommend that. And, and so as a, as a new, uh, as a new, a new brand, you'll probably make all those thousand dollar errors and lots of them along the way, trying to figure out what works and what, and what doesn't. We have one of, I think the top tech teams in the country uh, for our web support. And there are plenty of folks who will build a website for you, but you really need to truly understand how, what Google is looking for in a website to have that thing perform for you. So we can, we can, uh, also run their Google uh, pay-per-click ads. And you could sign up tomorrow and sign up to uh, post your own ads and you can blow through two, $3,000 in a hurry and not get a lead out of it because you've done, you, you don't have the settings quite right. You've got the ad copy written a little wrong. You're, you're targeting the wrong audience. There are all these mistakes are made by entrepreneurs every day. We minimize those. We're, we're, we're not perfect but we dramatically uh, minimize any errors like that. And we show you how to propel and, and excel, uh, accelerate your, your business. Uh, I think, uh, I think we're, that's our strongest, uh, our strongest. Uh, yes. Yeah. I mean, you know, uh, the, the, especially with paint core in particular, um, we're not teaching you how to paint. We're teaching you how to run a paint painting business. Yeah. And there's a there's a vast difference there, and um, you know I think any of us uh, who owns a home or who outsourced any sort of home services at some point realizes that um, you know when they're when the people that come into your home to do work on your home or in your yard um, are people are professional uh, when the branding on the van is legitimate the website's legitimate the marketing is is professional, the customer service and the feedback and the follow through is professional. It just gives you a real sense of trust around using that business. And we've also, I think we've all seen the opposite of that. Um, you know, anybody can hang a shingle, any Johnny lunch bucket can drive a, a, a van, a paint van and, and come and paint your house. But uh, there's a lot to be said for the substantial, um, you know, the substantial effect of having uh, that be a franchise. It's pretty cool stuff. Um, Jack, what about the process, right? If for, step us through a little bit, you know, if somebody were interested in, in opening one of your franchises, um, what's that process look like? You know, how long does it take? Uh, and just some of the big rocks around that. Sure. Um, so our process, uh, we typically, uh, uh, gather an inquiry off the internet, um, someone or, or an event like this, but folks will hear about us. They'll go to our website. They'll fill out our contact or request franchise information form. Um, that uh, automatically drops them into a, a short email campaign. Uh, uh, most of our prospects like to gather information at their pace, and we respect that. You're not going to get uh, repeated phone calls. Yes, we do attempt to make a couple of phone calls, but we respect your space. We're sending those emails out, help you gather, gather the information to get you to the point where you're ready for that phone call. So we have a, a calendar link for those phone calls with our director of franchise sales and business development. Uh, a couple of introductory calls, you know, some Q&A. Um, they typically come armed with some questions. And we encourage them, if they, if they get interested, to start, go to our website and pick up the phone and, and uh, go to our locations page and call the franchisees and talk to them. Uh, frankly, our franchisees are our greatest uh, sales tool. If I can get a prospect to uh, speak with any one of our franchisees, we're halfway to the sale. And typically, a sale will fall through because of uh, uh, funding challenges or the timing's not right for them. But we we get that uh, we get a lot of enthusiasm once once they're done talking to corporate, if you will. If I can get them to talk to the franchisees, that's that's a big part of our sales process. Uh, and they're not there to sell; they're just to tell you what it's like to be part of our team. Um, 
you fill out an application. It's, it's a little detailed, but it, it's not overly invasive at all. I respect people's privacy. I don't need to know every uh, checking account or savings account that you have. Uh, some franchise applications are just really intrusive. Ours, is, ours are not like that. Once we have that application, we'll get you the franchise disclosure document. And that's a big, long document. And my email that accompanies that is, is kind of a little tongue in cheek. It says, hey, grab some Red Bull and uh, take a look at this and then share it with your, your spouse, your preacher, your pastor, your rabbi, and your yoga instructor and, and talk to them. I want them to talk to their family and support team because they need that. They need that at the other end of this. They need others to be, uh, you know, kind of cheering them on that this is, this is something that they'll have some support uh, yeah. uh, to, to continue. Um, once that is completed, uh, if they want to move forward, they'll typically file uh, for a, an LLC, a limited liability company in their state. It's gotten very easy in most states. It's typically online, it happens rather quickly. Uh, then they'll get a draft uh, uh, agreement that'll be between our franchise group and that LLC. And this is the territory and this is how much your franchise fee. And they'll sit on that for, uh, for a week. The franchise disclosure document legally, just so you folks know, you have to have that in your hands for two weeks. I call it a cooling off period. Uh, years and years ago, there were some pretty high pressure franchise salesmen. You'd, they'd get you to come to what they call discovery day and they'd do the dog and pony show. And then they put a big document in front of you and you'd sign it and you didn't know what you signed. So the Federal Trade Commission said, you know, we're going we're gonna to make sure that they've had at least two weeks and that they shouldn't have any excuse about need, not being able to read it in time if you've got those two weeks. So if you find a franchise system that's ready to sign you without those two weeks, uh, run because they don't know what they're doing and they're, they're setting you both up for failure. Um, once you sign, we set you up for training. Our training is occurring right now in Tampa for three of our four brands. Uh, our field ops training is in Atlanta. Uh, the other brands are trained down in Tampa. Uh, training is about, depending on the brand, anywhere from three to, to eight days long. Um, while that is occurring, we're, we're building out web pages uh, for that location. Uh, my tech team is, is taking control of that. We're building out Facebook pages, social media accounts. I mean, there's a, we have an onboard checklist. I think it's um, something like 87 steps that we do to, to bring a, a franchise hmm. prospect on board and, and stand up that business. There's, there's a lot to it uh, that most people don't realize or appreciate until they Till they come aboard or if they do it on their own they're missing a lot of steps and they just don't realize that um and then Not surprising jack a pilot would have a checklist <laughs> seven oh man that's a time <laughs> so how, a how, how long does the whole process take jack so if we say go today yeah yeah you know, how long does it take typically? someone said you know go today and they had funding in place um you know they they could be up and running in six weeks. I mean, it, it can happen very fast. Um, the the slowdown is typically getting through the, if, if we're using the SBA because of COVID, that's just slowed down the process. It used to be a, an express loan for 30 days, maybe 40 days. That express loan is now 45 to 70 days. Um, there are other financing options out there. We've got a lot of different uh, finance funding options out there that most people aren't really aware of that we might be able to point them in that direction, but typically it's the funding that, that takes a while. Yeah. So six weeks on the short end and two months might be typical somewhere in that range. Yeah. I mean, from, from the time they say, yes, we're ready to go and uh, we, we could get it done in two months. Okay. We had another depending great on, question. Depending on the, the funding piece. Yeah. Very good. Um, we had another question here. This is a great question, uh, you know, and I think this speaks to the risk, right? So do you have to quit your current job to start? And if not right away, uh, how much time, you know, will I have to commit um, to start to running the company? So I guess this really yeah. speaks to at what point do I quit my day job right. and so, be supported by the income from the franchise? I, I was very sensitive about that when I built the brands. Um, we want you to be planning to leave your 
your current uh, position. Um, but I recognize that that early stage where you know you've got to you got to take care of your family, mm -hmm. yourself, or both, and so it it kind of depends. Um, it depends on the type of job you have. Um, customer service is number one for us, so we need to make sure that if you're working nine to five, you have someone else who's answering that phone for your customers. It, it's we wouldn't tolerate a situation where, well, we're going to get let it fill up our voicemail and we'll get to them tomorrow or or after the weekend that you'll never succeed that way so we don't want that for our customers and we, we don't want that for you so it um, i'm gonna have to answer that it depends it depends on which brand uh it depends on your job and it depends on what else you might have in place that could cover that so uh, we want you to respond as if you're working full-time to the customer and, and there's i i ran i was an airline pilot and I was still running my business. I had people covering for me while I was gone. Um, so as long as you can find a way to do that, I did. Uh, I was out of the country and I, I ran my business. Um, so it, it is doable, but you have to have the right personality for it. Got it. Um, how long until uh, the business is kind of up and running to a point where, you know, you would have the financial ability to quit your job, your day job? I would say that is almost 100% dependent upon the person involved. Um, we, uh, we're in the service business. And if I've got a franchisee who responds within a minute of a, 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 a customer inquiry, or I have one who's responding four or five hours later, the one who's responding within the minute is doing better than the one responding four or five hours later. So th there's no good answer for that one. It is, it is, it is up to that individual. I've, I've got my fourth franchisee came to me and he was in Northern Alabama. Actually, he was right near Fort McClellan where I went to military police school many years ago. Mm. And uh, being somewhat familiar with the area, I thought, I'm not so sure that this is a good place for our parking lot striping business. We need lots of parking lots in our territory. But he really loved the brand. We hit it off and he kept like selling himself on me. Uh, uh, yeah, to me, he was selling himself to me. And uh, so I talked it over with my franchise attorney and, and we said, you know what, um, we, we set his expectations to be fairly low in terms of what his sales volume would be. Um, he was number three in sales last year. <laughs> and wow. the year before, I think he was number one. So it's because of his energy and enthusiasm. And he started out working uh, at his other job. And he found a way to make that work, to get that phone uh, answered while he was tied up. And then he would hustle at night and on the weekends. And then he quickly said, you know, I'm quitting and I'm going to make this full time. And he's, he's just been an incredible franchise. And, and he's doing sales in that location that I never dreamed possible. Yeah. And, and it, it continues to get, uh, it continues to grow because of, all the repeat customers he's getting now. So it's very much individual driven as to when that, that'll that happen. And I, I will say that I've had folks that have dragged it out and their sales reflect that, and, but they're afraid to make that change. And if once you make that leap, you're all in and we're there to show you how to, to, to grow those sales. We're, we're, we're lucky we're in a, in a service space with good margins. It doesn't take a whole lot to get into the black in our businesses. Yeah. Um, and I want to point out too, you mentioned field ops. We didn't have a whole lot of time to talk uh, at length about each of your different uh, brands, but field ops is one that is designed to be a weekend, you know, warrior after hours, after your day job is done kind of a, kind of a uh, franchise at an extremely low cost, the something you can put on your credit card. Um, so there's really options here for everybody. Um, if you, uh, if you're super, super concerned about, you know, the income stream while you're getting your business up and running, there are options here, um, so that you don't, that are specifically designed that you don't ever do that. And that one is field ops. Um, uh, another question about funding, Jack, I know we, we, uh, you may have briefly touched on that when we talked about, when you talked about the four, uh, concepts. Uh, the four different businesses, but can you talk about that again in terms of how much funding is needed for each of these? 
Sure. So the um, three of our brands, um, excuse me, two of our brands use pickup trucks, uh, G-Force and Field Ops. Coincidentally, most of the folks who inquire are driving a pickup truck. It's, uh, I guess it's a veteran thing. Um, and so if, if you take that off the plate, that's a big part of the expense, <laughs> certainly for field ops. Mm. Uh, field ops, you're going to wrap that, that truck for under 3000 bucks, uh, a few thousand dollars in equipment, uh, some miscellaneous tools. Uh, we've got a $5,000 franchise fee for the founders. Uh, we think we've, uh, we're going to be signing our first field ops person here shortly uh, for San Antonio and uh, a, a retiring, a just retired uh, a 20 year uh, Air Force officer. And um, uh, where was I going? So for under 20,000, if you have a pickup, and that's one of the reasons I, I built field ops, I saw this need that wasn't being fulfilled. Um, we kind of couldn't keep up with demand with uh, G-Force. Our equipment was a little heavy for the fields, though technically it's similar. It's not ideally suited for much lower cost equipment. It's, it's the right equipment to put on the fields. We also have tiny ro mobile robots that are an option. Of course, they're more money, but you can do a, a soccer field in two and a half hours by yourself or with a robot, uh, the robot for 20 in 20 minutes and, and really drive down your overhead. But that's, that's a, a, a discussion a little further down the road. But uh, Field Ops was to satisfy that entrepreneurial itch that a lot of veterans have, but they just don't have that much funding to go all in or they want to keep their day job. Um, I think Field Ops is a really neat uh, way to get your foot in the door, see if business owning a business is for you. And there are all sorts of options to grow that business from within if you want. And then yep. up the chain is G-Force. That's our most established brand, of course, 32 locations. Um, our franchise fee uh, caps out at $25,000 for that. Typically, it falls into about the $20,000 category with some uh, service discounts. Um, a Mach 1, that has a $25,000 franchise fee, but the first five uh, get in on the founder's discount and it's only a ten thousand dollar fee most epoxy for fran franchise fees are in the forty fifty thousand dollar range uh similarly with paint core uh first five are going to come in at ten thousand dollars after that it'll be twenty five thousand bucks uh still about half of what most painting franchise fees are we've we've baked in uh very heavy discounts because you know, I keep low overhead here to, so that way I can pass along those savings and get more, you know, open the door for more veterans to own businesses. I think taking control of your life with your own business is really important these days. And, uh, you know, we have a, a great, uh, great group on that video with Eric. If I could capture in a bottle that what happened that night, that was at our annual conference where we give out our, our, our awards, our awards banquet. It was at, um, Ruth's Chris down in Charlotte. Um, if I could just capture that and share that with you somehow, you'd understand that this is this is much more than a business. It's mm -hmm. it's really a, a brotherhood and a sisterhood, and 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 we're fussy about who comes aboard. If if you're a veteran with the, with the check and you're ready to go, and we just don't think you're a team player, you know, we're, pro we're it's not you know you're it's not open to anybody and everybody. We we get to pick and choose too. Our job is to convince you to join our team. And then your job is to convince us that you're a good fit for our team. So. Yeah, no, good stuff. Um, and I, I just want to also point out that, you know, the, the franchise outside of the free, there's the franchise fee component to it. There's the build out, which is usually, you know, you talked about the wrap or the equipment, if you don't have the truck, um, but those are hard assets, right. Mm -hmm. That have residual value. And uh, the other thing, you know, worst case scenario, you get into one of these uh, franchises, this or others, there, there are usually a lot of options that you can sell that back, uh, sell that to another individual. Um, so, you know, the risk is, is certainly mitigated in a lot of different areas. Um, and um, so anyway, good stuff. And there's, and there's, low there's cost. no risk, you know, there's just never no risk. Uh, yep. I don't know of a risk free opportunity um but like you said they are uh, you've got a lot of hard assets there that are easily easily sold um 
machines are in short supply. Uh, you know, we've had we've had a couple of folks who came on board. It wasn't a good fit for them. Things change in their personal life. They they needed to move on, and our existing franchisees gobbled up their their territory. They those they negotiated their own deal, and we just transferred their license over to the other franchisee. And without getting uh, beat up too much, it was um, they've been they've been good transactions, and because life changes. One of our guys became sick; he couldn't run his business. He had just started, literally, and needed to to get out of it in a hurry. And we were able to help him do that. Yep. Uh, very good. Uh, good stuff. Great questions. Appreciate everybody coming tonight. Um, so go ahead. You can uh, fill out the, the lead form uh, if you're interested in uh, talking with Jack or his team afterward. They're going to hang around for uh, up, up to a couple of hours if, if uh, there are people that want to hang out that long. Um, they will be available in the booth um, if you're, again, if you're not uh, in, in the actual webinar or the, the actual booth itself, you can go to gijobs.com slash interview dash request. That's gijobs.com slash interview dash request. That URL is in the uh, chat, but for those who are watching on social, um, you've got that as well. And uh, so that concludes the evening. So tonight, uh, Jack and his team are hanging around, or you can also schedule uh, a one-to-one -one session with Jack or a member of his team for tomorrow between 3 p.m. and 9 p.m. Eastern time. So we, we uh, did that by design so that uh, you can fit that around, uh, a lot of flexibility to fit that around your schedule. Jack, I want to thank you for joining us tonight. Um, thank you, Thank Chris. everybody uh, who tuned in tonight. Rachel, thanks for showing us uh, how to get it all registered. And I wish everybody the best of luck. That's all we've got. Thanks so much. Bye.